The fact that Artis turned evil changed everything we know about World of Warcraft. If he didn't chase Morganis, Lord Ron would have almost certainly survived and he would be king. Quill the Last and Sylvanas would survive, there would be no Forsaken, Jaina would never go to Kalimdor, there would be no Alliance presence on Kalimdor, the Alliance would be led by Artis, the capital would be Lord Ron, but there would be no faction conflict seeing that they're on different isolated parts of the world, Illidan would never go to Outland, Garrosh would never come to Azeroth, we would never discover Pandaria and it would remain hidden and Azeroth today would be a completely different place. So what would happen if Artis wasn't so rash and the Scourge ploy failed to convert him into a dead just like Alatus got corrupted without even knowing about it, the same can happen to you on the internet, but this video sponsor Surfshark can help you prevent that. You can use a VPN to bypass restrictions, follow your favorite websites on vacation, get much better deals on online shopping as well as staying safe and using public Wi-Fi, and you can of course send and receive files securely. The coolest thing about Surfshark though is that you have unlimited devices, over 3200 servers in 100 countries as well as customer support available 24-7. Best of all, Surfshark is not just a VPN, they're also offering Surfshark Antivirus, Surfshark Alert, Surfshark Search as well as Alternative ID. So make sure to click the link in the description and use my code Doron's Movies, and you will get 4 months completely free and they're so confident in their service that they're offering a 30 day money back guarantee. Check out Surfshark and stay safe on the internet. When everyone thinks of the Scourge, they think about this endless undead army with dragons that destroyed Lord Ron, that almost took over the entire world, that was one of the biggest threats ever, but I think people don't realize just how much of a scam the Scourge originally was. It literally almost entirely operated on a bluff. They had banked on the character of Artis being lashed and hot-headed, and because of it, their power had increased tenfold, and that is really why they became such a superpower. There is a reason Reason, Nerzul chose Artis as his champion out of all the people on Azeroth. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the LH King Nerzul was weak, he did have a force, but in a regular invasion he never really stood a chance against Lord Ron. He was planted into Northern all of a sudden, he started expanding his physical forces, he got uh, races one by one, but in the War of the Spider he almost lost against the Nerubians, and keep in mind, Northern didn't really have any single powerful force that was hard to overcome other than the Nerubians. On the other hand, the Eastern Kingdoms were a whole different story, the United Human and Elven Kingdoms had previously managed to repel a much stronger Orcish invasion, Legion invasion, and they kinda knew there was not the way to go again. So plan B threw the Lich King started and it worked flawlessly as they got like the strongest kingdom Lord Ron to fall from within and without Artis and his temperament, this never would have happened. So how did it all really start? Well, it began through Kill to Zad and a few agents he managed to get and the grain shipments that started spreading the plague of undeath that ultimately bolstered their numbers. However, all of this was just a localized threat that started growing more and more, but ultimately the entire plan of Nerzul was not really to convert the entire population of Lordron, but it was really to bait Artis that would then become his agent and that would then do the real damage. The whole ordeal at Stratholm wasn't to get a big army for the Scourge or to destroy Lordron, but to divide Artis from his closest allies, to get him incredibly furious and to chase Morganis with a personal vendetta like this blind vendetta. His chase from Morganis would then lead him to Frostmourne, which was really the original plan, and ultimately this is where Artis was completely lost. Then Artis came in with his own undead followers, he murdered the king, his father, which no one saw coming, and this is what really blew Lordron apart. What you need to keep in mind though was that Lordron was not weak in any stretch of the imagination. Even after Lordron lost their king, Artis didn't exactly have an easy time accomplishing his goal. He faced a lot of resistance, but at that point it was too late. Many cities were destroyed, the armies were divided, shattered, leaderless, and as is with the nature of undeath, the more you lose, the stronger the enemy becomes. Now this leads us to the topic of this video and what would have happened if Artis didn't take the bait, he didn't chase Morganis, and he didn't become a death knight. The answer is a whole lot of things, literally everything, and I mean everything would be so different. The entirety of Azeroth would be a completely different place right now. So let's begin. It all really started with Stratholm. 
This was the breaking point. As I said, the entire ploy by the Scourge was a localized threat and even this late into it, it could have been contained. It was really just a grain and the undead could have been stopped through quarantine. Keep in mind, when Atis went with his army to Northrend, Lordron didn't exactly fall apart or was overwhelmed with the undead. This only happened later. So two big things could have happened at this point in history. Either Artis did the purge of Stratholme but wasn't emotionally baited by Mulganis or he didn't do it at all. If he didn't do it, he could have just camped outside a city and would ultimately have to purge the city when it was fully converted. Let's be real, no matter the way you turn it, the way you paint it, there was no easy cure for the city when the plague started spreading. They would have had to do some hard things but a big event would have happened here regardless. There would be no split with Uther and Jaina and this in itself would have changed everything. They would have had to cleanse the city afterwards together of course but Uther would remain as the teacher and the guiding light for Artis and Artis wouldn't feel abandoned by Jaina and all this would drastically alter his mental state. The mental state is not the only thing here though. Most importantly Jaina as she wouldn't go away from Artis wouldn't take some of the people and sail to Kalimdor and instead she would remain on the Eastern Kingdoms. Just this little thing here would make everything completely different. There would be no Terramor, there would be no Alliance presence on Kalimdor, later Admiral Proudmoor would not have to come and the entire Rexar thing wouldn't happen. Now another event here is crucial that is really hard to say. I mean originally the orcs came to Kalimdor because Troll was visited by Medivh that saw what would happen with the Scourge and the Burning Legion to the Eastern Kingdoms. Now if we do say that Medivh still gave the warning as he knew the orcs couldn't really establish themselves the horde with the lord on around troll would still reach Kalimdor. He would unite the Dark Spear and the Torin, but there would be no humans to fight on Kalimdor. Krom wouldn't attack the humans. He might not have gone on that little lumber mission that really pissed off the Night Elves. I don't think it's likely that the Night Elves would have obviously joined the Horde. They might have been enemies of the Orcs, Thorn, and the Trolls, but they certainly wouldn't have joined the Alliance in any way. It's very likely that the Night Elves would be some type of a neutral race like the Dryads or the Furbox, for example. However, before we get into the geopolitical political state of Azeroth, let's go back to Artis here. I'm almost certain if Artis didn't chase Morganis to Northrend, the threat would have eventually been contained. It wouldn't have been done easily, that is for certain, there might have been a few more cities that would fall to the Scourge just like Stratcom, but ultimately they would manage to contain the threat as keep in mind, Lordron was quite strong at this point in time. Now, of course, without the expedition to Northrend, Magni Bronzebeer would have certainly fallen with no one to save him and this would drastically affect the dwarves, but Artis wouldn't take Frostmourne. Now, it's likely that Ner'zhul would find someone else to take Frostmourne, but I don't think this other agent would have had nearly as big of an impact as Prince Artis. Now here's the thing, with the news of Stratholme and the undead threat, it is likely that the other humans, even as far as Stormid, would do more to help eventually, seeing that Stratholme is really close to the last, they might have allied with the elves as well in a much more open manner to help contain this. Once again, remember, Quartalas was a huge regional power, the Scourge barely managed to destroy it even with Lordran gone. Additionally, Dalaran was incredibly powerful as well and it would remain with Antonidas as the leader. Now with all the big powers in the Eastern Kingdom, I think they would be able to extinguish the budding undead threat and now Ner'zhul's power would really be contained in Northrend. The thing is though, without destroying like 90% of Lordaeron and Quotalas, there would be no serious undead force to do anything that big. I don't think Ner'zhul would stand a single chance by trying to do an outright invasion from the sea with like ships and flying mounts, but it's likely that the constant incursions would have eventually forced an expedition to Northrend to find deal with the threat. Remember, Artis went to Northrend on his own, he was recalled by Terranas, he didn't listen. Here there would be a serious organized force of the humans, the elves and they really could have easily stopped Ner'zhul or at least it would be a big battle akin to Wrath of the Lich King and very likely Ner'zhul would ultimately be defeated. However, you need to remember that the entire point of Ner'zhul was to facilitate a Burning Legion invasion. Seeing that this didn't happen, everything would change. Either the Legion would have to invade another way or they might have come to save Ner'zhul instead of trying to destroy him. This would drastically alter Illidan and his goal and the entire Outland scenario might have never been explored. Still, if the Legion invasion happened, it might have happened in Northrend and it would have played out completely different. Now, without the Archimon attack on Kalimdor, there would really be no use union of the Horde and the Alliance. Most importantly, the Alliance itself would probably never unite as it did. First of all, with Quartal 
last still being a thing, Sylvanas would just be a high elven ranger and there would be no forsaken. The humans and the elves would control the eastern kingdoms and there would be zero horde presence here. The alliance wouldn't have much of a reason other than the scourge to become as powerful as it did and even if it did, the power would pull around Lordron, not Stormwind. It's likely that Terranas and Atis would be the true leaders of the alliance, while Varian wouldn't be that big of a deal. The alliance capital would be the capital city of Lordron. Now, seeing that Terranas was very old, it's likely that Atis would ultimately become a king in a few years, and he would be something akin to Varian or Anduin, and he really would be the leader of the alliance. Regardless, I don't think the factions would be as emphasized as they are today. The Horde would be entirely contained on Kalimdor, while the alliance would be entirely contained on the Eastern Kingdom. They might not have any contact whatsoever. Just like how the humans never really had any interactions with the Night Elves over the thousands of years despite the fact that they lived on the same planet, there would be no reason for the Alliance to even go to Kalimdor. Also, very likely the entire Scourge Legion invasion would be a strictly an Alliance thing. Just this fact alone would change every single expansion that ever happened after that. No faction conflict in Classic. As I said, with Illidan doing something completely different or very likely still being imprisoned, there would be no Burning Crusade, there would be no Outland. With Ner'zhul defeated, there would be no Wrath of the Lich King. Very likely Pandaria would never be discovered without the faction conflict. And also, there would be no Garrosh as we wouldn't go to Outland. Now, after this, it is impossible to really predict anything. Almost certainly the Legion would invade again and both factions would get involved, but it would be so drastically different that it would really be a different game. So really, when you think about it, the fact that Altus decided to chase Morganus to Northern and changed the world possibly even more than the Sundering of Azeroth itself. Thank you for watching, check out all the training as the watching screen by clicking on the screen and check out my video on ancient training by clicking on the screen as well. See you next time.